Hey guys, it's May May and I had an idea. Sometimes you guys ask me where I get my inspiration from and a lot of times you get kind of tired of hearing Pinterest and Google. So today I'm going to show you some other places for inspiration that you don't even have to turn the computer on for. I'm showing you how to be inspired by things that are not online. They're not Pinterest, they're not Google. It's stuff around your home or around your environment, okay? So today I'm going to use this picture which I think is so stinking cute and I've wanted to do it forever. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to title my little card, okay? So this is going to be a paper-pieced church. Now you might be like, well, that's not paper-pieced here. Nope, I'm being inspired, okay? So it's inspired me to do a paper-pieced church and I'm going to make it a card. Now I might be going to use this as the front of a folio or a folio page, but this is going to be a card for me. And I'm going to make it A2 sized. So I'm going to come right here to finish card size and write a Two. Now that's just the standard that I use, right? So that means my base cut needs to be A2 or it needs to be four and a quarter by, and it depends on the orientation I want to do, okay? I typically like to do the ones that open kind of at the top, and I think this would be really cute for that. So I'm going to do four and a quarter by 11, and that will get me my base, all right? And you can change that if you decide you want to have your card open this way or that way. And honestly, when I come back to make this card again sometime, I can edit that on the fly, okay? What is my source? I'm going to put little <laughs> picture. I just love this picture, and I think it's going to be perfect. All right, now what we have to decide is this. How much of this is going to inspire us? I'm very inspired by that kind of text I can see in the background. Do you see that? I love that text background and how it's kind of um, knocked back with like some paint. This is paint because you can see this is a little canvas. So I like that. So what I want to do is I want to find a text background. Now, I'm just going to do this. This is just going to tell me what to lean into, and then I'll decide where it's coming from later, okay? I also like the little grassy hill down here. I think I have a dye that will do grass, so I'm going to look for that real quick. So we actually have this Dare to be Artsy dye that's kind of new for us, and I really like this one right here that's like a little scalloped kind of hillside. I think I'm going to lean into that one. So what I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to put grass die and I'm going to leave it at that for now because I will put in what I actually end up using at the time. I'll put that next to it, but I know I need something grass or I need to cut it by hand. I may even come back later and say I cut this by hand or what have you. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to pull that piece out to work with. The next thing I'm really inspired by is the church itself. What I love about it is it's very wonky, right? It's not perfectly drawn, which means I really want to try my hand at scissors and scraps. I really do. I want to see what I can do without even using my trimmer. So what I want to do is I want to do scrap bin. That's where I'm going to get the church from. So I'm going to write that in here, okay? And then again, we'll come back and make more notes as we go. So right now, I know I need to find a textured background because I don't have one of those picked out yet. I'm going to use that grass dye for the bottom, and then I'm going to lean into the scrap bin for the, for the church, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. The next thing I think I need is some wording. So I'm going to look for a stamp set for that. Now, I found this stamp set that has May God Bless You, and it's kind of that handwritten, kind of loose font, and I really like that, and I know I can use this on my card in some way, so I think I'm going to use this. So, I've written stamp set at the bottom, and I, because I know my stamp set, it's a definite, so I'm going to write God's Blessings down here, because that's the name of my stamp set, and then I also leave myself some room up there for... Um, for other information. Somebody asked me if this was going to be big enough. This is so, this is plenty big enough for me. If you need it to be bigger, you can make yourself one and make them like a full size page or just use a composition notebook and kind of do the same thing, right? But I, this is plenty enough room for that. And what I love about this too, is I have a lot of options here to add with this. Right now, I really love May God Bless You and Keep You. That's a popular worship song right now. So I'm going to lean into that one, I think. All right, so that's the stamp set chosen. So I feel like we're in pretty good shape. I feel like this card can be made at this point. Okay, so we've got all of that figured out. Let's do a sketch. Let's kind of sketch out what we're thinking. So again, I'm really inspired by this. So I really do want the ground on the bottom, okay? I think I want the little church just like it is in the picture, something like this. The thing is, um, I have another idea I might try. I'm just going to kind of sketch this up. Do you see how I'm not doing anything fancy, okay? We're just going to be inspired by this little church. 
One thing you can do when you're doing something like this, if you spend the time and make this large enough, you can put half of it on this card and cut it in half and use half on another card. So I was kind of thinking about doing that. So we might even see me do that. And then of course, wording will go here and I have terrible handwriting. So I just do this number and I know that's wording and I'm probably gonna put some here and I may even put something down here, I don't know. But that is my inspiration. So now, Let's make the call. So I need to find the first thing, which is the text background. I love the text background and that's what I wanted to feature there. So look, I happened to find this just in my scrap bin. It was just a piece that I'd used part of and left a pretty big piece of. So I cut this down to four by five and a quarter. So if you remember, the background of that picture had some blue kind of paint smeared on it. I'm gonna try to get that same effect with my Distress Ink here. I'm just gonna kind of ink that up like this, try to get some of those little streaks, but also still leave my um, text intact, intact so you can see it. So see how pretty this is? And I'm gonna kind of pick it up and get that to really smear around. I want it to be pretty obvious. You know, I want this ink to be very, um, almost have a good coverage to it, especially on the edges. And the reason is it does on the picture. There was a lot of that. I really like how that looks. It even looks like the sun. Now I'm gonna set this aside to dry for a second, but before I do, I wanna establish how wide I want my church to be. It looks like I could go, I could go really thin, or I could go like an inch and three quarters. I kinda like the look of an inch and three quarters, so I think I'm gonna do that as my width, and then for height, I kinda want it to end the little, everything at the top of it end about four and a half, okay? So those are kind of the parameters I'm gonna stick into. So let me get the piece that's gonna be the church. And remember I told you I wanted to do this with my scissors. I don't wanna use my trimmer. I'm gonna just see what I can do. So let me see how wide this guy is. Let's use our little mat here. He is one, two, he's a little too wide. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna mark it like this. Now remember, I don't want him to be perfect, okay? I'm wanting this to feel kind of like that picture did. So I'm gonna cut this up like this and cut that off because I think that's way too big already. Let's bring this guy over and see if I like an inch and three quarters. I think I might even like an inch and a half. Okay, so I like how that looks and I'm gonna be putting him on that little grass heel so I can lift him up a little bit. So he's clearly too tall. So I'm gonna cut him down about like this. So that's gonna be the body of our church up on the little grassy hill, okay? Now, if you remember in the picture, it had the little, the steeple portion. I think we might can get it out of this. We might need to go a little bigger, but we'll see, okay? Let's go ahead and work on our roof line. So if this is gonna be the height of the body of the church, what I'm gonna do is come right here and do an angle and then an angle. And remember, I don't want it to look perfect. See that little piece right there? This is a lot of fun. You could do this with kids. All right, let's get our gray. Here's my gray piece here. And what I think I'll do, I'm gonna cut straight across. This is a perfectly straight edge. I'm gonna cut that with scissors myself really quick just to give myself kind of a hand cut edge, if that makes sense, okay? Then I'm gonna cut one more strip to be my, my roof. So let's cut this about like this. And I bet I can get what I need out of this. Let's cut this in half. And let's come right here to our piece. And I'm gonna place one here and just kind of do this little hangover situation. I think I want it to go about like that. See what I'm getting? Do you see how fun this is? There's like, there's nothing to this. Then I'll do the same with this guy. And I'm gonna bring him about like this and try to get close to the same angle. Just kind of looking at it. Let's see, it's hard for you guys to see what I'm doing here. See if I can hold that like that. Let me cut it and it'll make more sense. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Find my little area here and cut, or find how far I want it to hang off, about like that. And then when I glue this down, anything that's not in the point, I'll trim away then. So that'll be the top of our little church. That's gonna be super cute. Now we can do the little piece that's under here. I think it might need to be a little wider than that. Let me get a, a little wider piece. So about like that. Oh, that's perfect. I like that size. And then we need a little point for the top of it. So let's go back to that gray that we've already used. And let's just cut a little square off here. And then I'm just gonna cut it at an angle and see if this is what we need. I think it might be. 
Look at that, that's super cute, super cute. Okay, let's make the little cross for the top. Let's use the same gray so you can really see it. We could just stamp, but I think I really want it to, to show. So I'm gonna come right here on my gray paper and just cut myself a strip like this, and then cut this down and make this the cross. So if we cut here, I should be able to lay this across. Yep, see that? And then that can be our little cross at the top. We might need to sink him down a little bit or even make him a little bit shorter, but we can. Okay, this looks adorable. I wanna make the little window for right there. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna trust it. I'm gonna cut a little half circle, like a thumbprint kind of thing. And just trust it, because remember what our inspiration looked like. It was not perfect, okay? So this will be our little window at the top. And again, we'll place everything later, but we'll have that little window in there. And let's do the door. So I have this little red piece here. I think what I'm gonna do is just from memory, kind of make the shape of that door we saw. I think it went to a kind of a point, and then it went kind of down and around. <laughs> See why this is fun? And I wanted to do this. This was what it had inspired me to do forever. My door might be a little bit wide. Every time I went to our women's restroom and saw this picture, I thought that should be a card, and I wanted it to be very similar to how they had it. So look, that's gonna be our little door, and now, the hardest part. I think this will be the hardest part. So I want to make the little stained glass window. So I'm going to start by making myself a base the size I want the stained glass to be. And I think it's going to be something like this, but I'll have to hold it up to the little church and see. This might be too big because I don't have a whole lot of space here. Yep, that's a little bit big, so let's trim it down. I think that one's pretty good. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut that same shape in the colors that are gonna be the stained glass, okay? So remember, it was these colors, and we're just using these tiny little bits, look, off of our scraps. So I'm gonna cut this one out, cut a little pink, cut a little yellow. All this will go right back in bin, and a little bit of blue. All these colors are the um, Sizzix colors that are so pretty, those those packs that come in all those little pretty pastels and the just all the colors, they're so pretty. What I'm gonna do here is cut this shape out in the pink, then in the blue, and you guessed it, in the other two colors as well. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack all of these colors on top of each other, and I'm gonna cut them into pieces. And the reason I need them to be together is because I need the pieces to fit like a puzzle back together. So what I'm gonna do is start by cutting them in half, don't worry, we'll pick all these up in a second. Let's keep this one in our hand. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it down into slices, trying to keep them from flying everywhere. You see what I'm doing there? Then we'll pick these guys up, put them back together and slice them as well. Now I've just laid those on my surface and I'm gonna stain glass this. What I'm gonna do is pick up one of the pieces. Let me use my quick stick. This will be easier with that. Okay, so I did a little dry run. So that is my little gray piece underneath. I haven't glued anything down. I just wanted to show you that. And I took the little pieces that I sliced apart and just placed them back where I thought they would go. And I'm gonna glue these down and then I'll trim off anything that, that kind of hangs over the edge. So remember our little gray piece we started with? Let's glue these guys in place. So now look at our wonky little stained glass. I think it's super cute. Remember the other one was wonky too, so we're good. There's our little stained glass. There's our little, that's pretty much all the pieces we need, but we need to ink them. They are too, um, too clean, right? So let's get some, some distress ink. I couldn't decide which one to use. I think I want to use this light gray, but sometimes I don't get the payoff from it I want. This is that new Lost Shadow. I'm going to see if I can get what I'm looking for here. Let's start with the red since it's kind of dark, and let's just see what we can get on here. That looks pretty good. I really don't want it to be a different color. I just want it to have some ink. Can you see that? It's very pale, but I think once we get it all done, it'll show up even better. Let's assemble this guy. Here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna start with the roof. I think that'll give me a good place to lay my other pieces down if I go ahead and get the roof on top. So let's put this little guy on first and just at an angle and just how I want him to hang off something like that. That's cute. Then let's add some more glue on top here. I think this is adorable, you guys. All right, let me get this about even, because I'm gonna trim the top away. Remember we talked about doing that anyway. 
There we go. Now I'll trim off where it overhangs and I'm gonna hit that with ink again. But I tell you what, I will ink, well, I better do it now. I was gonna say I was gonna do another ink at the very end, but if I glue something down and I can't reach here, I need to go ahead and get that, super cute. Okay, now let's lay it down and let's put our stained glass in place. This is what's gonna matter for our door. So I'm gonna get that in there. Look how cute this is, oh my goodness. Okay, a little bit of glue, place this guy down. I can see this being a cute Sunday school project. If you're looking for something to do in Sunday school, this could be really, really cute. Then our little red door. I'm just gonna apply glue here and stick our door down. And I know it's hanging off, but I wanted it to hang off until I established how much of it I needed, and now I can trim that away. And I won't need to ink it because it's gonna be behind the grass down there. Let's put our what would this be? Our uh, bell tower, I guess, is what this would be, or the steeple, maybe. We'll put this up here. Too cute. Let's go ahead and put our window there so we can establish where the top is going. And then we'll glue the little roof piece here. Once you get all the pieces cut and inked, it goes super fast. And we need to assemble our cross. Get all that glue off there. Okay, let's put our cross together. This, I'm gonna glue behind the steeple piece. That is so cute. Let's bring our page back over. Okay, so I found the grass that I wanna use. This guy's a little bit um, too tall for me. I may just glue him down and cut him off afterwards because I kinda want him, I want him pretty low because I don't want to have to change my church. I want to put it down in here. And the church could actually hang over the side a little bit because this piece is cut to be mat sized. So I've got a tiny little bit that it could hang over. Same with the grass if I wanted it to. I think I want it to be something like that. Isn't that adorable? Okay, here's what I'm noticing. It's not popping off the page as much as I wanted it to. And there's a couple more things I wanted to do to it first anyway. So let me show you. I'm gonna use my pencil for this. And I don't know if you remember, but on the original little thing we saw, they had like these little bricks on the side. I'm just gonna kind of fake some little bricks with my pencil, just here and there along the side. And I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. And I'm gonna do some up here. And some of the spots were just little lines here and there. So I'm gonna do that too to just fill in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scratch in the center of the door with my pencil, just scratch that in scratch in a little doorknob on either side, and you can scratch in as much detail as you want here. And I may scratch across here to be the, kind of the base for the window. You could cut another piece if you wanted, but I think that's enough. And I kind of want to do enough of this scratching in that everything kind of matches. I think that is so cute. Let me bring it up where you can see it. It looks really cute in person. See all the little scratches that really changes things i'm also gonna white pin it you know i have to and i'm just kind of scratching these lines because i don't feel like this is kind of a polka dotty situation i feel like it's kind of scratchy white pen makes all the difference all right let's ink this grass so it'll kind of match all right i want to pop the little church up too let me get some foam all right i'm going to place this little guy first and the reason i'm placing him first is because i want to make sure my little um cross has plenty of room at the top because I can edit the grass. So I just popped him up. I think that's adorable. I'm in love with it. Okay, so I can edit the grass by moving it wherever I want it. And I think I'm going to glue the grass down and have it kind of lift on top of the church that's popped up like that. So I'm going to run glue down here to grab that. I think I'll put a little glue here too just so the grass will catch. And let's just kind of place that. We'll trim off whatever we don't need. I also think I wanna come in here with this um, very pale gray, and I'm gonna to try to add some more. I wanna to try to knot this back even more, um, cause I wanna put a sentiment here, and I haven't decided if I'm gonna stamp directly on the page, or if I'm gonna put it onto another piece of cardstock and like pop it up too. But I wanna knock this back a little bit, and also I think that'll help the church to pop even more. See how the light's picking up there? You cannot see this color. It is also picking up the um, distressing underneath, but that's not a big deal. So originally I was gonna use this stamp set, but you can see now that this wording is too big. So 
I've gone to a second one, this set called Praise the Lord. I love this. We're going to use the one that says Praise the Lord, and I'm going to put it up in that corner. I think that'll be perfect. I'm going to do this on my Misty, and I'll show you why. All right, a couple of reasons we're going to use the Misty. Number one, I've done all this work. I don't want it to mess up, right? Number two, I want to stamp this two, maybe three times to get a nice dark ink on there. I don't mind it being a little see-through because my inspiration was two, right? All right, so I'm going to pick this up. And I'm going to use my favorite Onyx Black pigment. This is so dark and it'll be so rich on here. So that's pretty good. You can see that pretty good. We did a lot of inking on the background to make that happen, but I'm gonna do it three times to make it super dark. Much better, see how dark that is? Let's pick this up and bring it up so you can see it. I'm in love with this little card front. Let's put this on a base and get it ready to go in the mail. So I'm gonna use this craft color. I think that'll be cute for the base. And I think I'm gonna pop it up again. I think that will be really cute too. And that is our card. Let's bring our inspiration piece back over. Look at there, guys. That's pretty cool, right? So from this little picture, I was inspired to paper piece, right? To cut with my scissors and not use my trimmer. To use pencil sketching on the side, right? It really inspired me to do a lot. And it really did kind of lay out the card. This was pretty easy because this is like, you know, a flat image. This was pretty easy to kind of duplicate. I love how that turned out. I think it, it was a lot of fun to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did, and I cannot wait to see what inspires you, what projects you're going to be making from things around your home. Share them with, with us on our customer gallery, and even better, go to our Facebook group called May May Made It and So Did I. Share with us over there because you could post a picture of your inspiration piece and then your final product. I think that would be super cool to see. Thanks so much for being here today, and until next time, bye now. Thank mm -hmm. you.